Uh, ISFCAS is uh, all the measures that we implement uh, all over the, throughout the world to ensure that uh, nuclear material and facilities are exclusively used for peaceful purposes. So we apply safeguards for uh, 179 member states. Uh, and there we have about three, 1,300 facilities under safeguards. Theoretically calculated uh, all the nuclear material, uh, over 180,000 nuclear weapons could be made from that material. So it's reasonably large, large operation. We do over 2,000 uh, inspections over the year. We receive more than 700,000 uh, reports every year. We apply technology, uh, several hundred satellite imageries every year. Uh, we have uh, more than 20,000 seals per year, over 1,000 monitoring and measurement systems in place. So a lot of all kinds of technology and, and human activities. SAFECAS is a very old concept. It was basically uh, established already back in 1957 when it uh, was very clear that you can use nuclear energy for civilian purposes, for peaceful purposes, and at the same time for military purposes. So it was understood that uh, once you, on the other hand, want to promote uh, professional civilian activities, of course you want to ensure that there are no, no military uh, activities and that nuclear uh, materials are not spread and diverted to that direction. Uh, then about a decade after that one, uh, 1968, a uh, NPT agreement, which is this non-proliferation uh, agreement, was agreed. Uh, today, uh, more than uh, 175 countries are parties to the agreement, so it's, a, it's a, one of the most uh, widespread agreements in the world. First, we receive information. We receive information from the state themselves. Uh, we receive information throughout uh, open sources and, and, and other ways. Then we analyze this information. Uh, based on the analysis, then we make uh, inspections to the countries. Uh, we inspect to verify that the information is, is correct and the information is, is complete. And then with the information from the inspector, inspections and inspectors, of course, all together, we then evaluate uh, what are the findings that are the member states living up to their obligations and, and what they have been agreed in those agreements and made the safeguards conclusions. And of course this is a, a kind of a cycle so that we use information that we receive always for the new safeguards, inspections, planning them, again making new findings and again then concluding how states are are doing the things. But these are basically the major steps, major parts of the, of the uh, safeguards work. We have, as I mentioned, over 1,000 uh, monitoring systems in place. They are either kind of visual type of monitoring systems or, or then monitoring system based on radiation uh, detection and radiation monitoring. Uh, we apply uh, sealing systems, different sealing systems, more than 20,000 seals applied at this point in time. Uh, we make also uh, use of satellite imagery, uh, looking a bit uh, broader and larger scales, uh, what things are happening. Then we collect uh, lots of environmental samples uh, in Cyprus Dorf, where we have our laboratories. We analyze those samples to see what's going on in the country. So technology helps us in many respects in, in this area. We always go first to our own information and, and we try to re-establish uh, and, and recheck what the situation really is. If that doesn't help, uh, then we go back to the member state asking for clarification or asking for amplification that what the situation is. Uh, if we can't find a satisfactory resolution through, through that means, then uh, it is possible if it is a more serious anomaly that we have to go to the board of governors IAEA Board of Governors and present inform the board of the situation. Uh, the board uh, can then, after its uh, considerations, uh, ask us to do certain additional uh, extra things or uh, if the, it's a case of uh, clear non-compliance of their uh, state obligations, uh, then the matter can be taken to the United Nations uh, Security Council. 
Uh, over 120 countries have uh, voluntarily signed the so-called additional protocol. It is a protocol that provides us with uh, quite greater access into the country, into the country's uh, information related to its nuclear program, uh, to the locations that are involved, to its uh, people that are involved, and in that way provides us a, a ex excellent larger tool to make an assessment of the whole uh, nuclear program of the country. Well, the whole safeguard stuff that is doing the safeguards work is, is a little bit more than 800. Uh, about 500 of them are professional people looking at the, the nuclear materials or programs in the department uh, in, of safeguards. About 250 of them are designated as inspectors to do their activities in the field. All these people come from uh, basically all around the world uh, with a variety of uh, backgrounds, mostly uh, technical and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, they are initially thoroughly trained, trained in uh, legal aspects, uh, administrative aspects, but, but of course inspection aspects. And then when they are designated and they go to the field, uh, of course during their career they are trained in particular areas, technical areas or legal areas. The only inspectors we have in IAEA are inspectors in the Department of Safeguards. So the inspectors are only looking at nuclear material and facilities in terms of states uh, complying with their obligations to use the material only exclusively for peaceful purposes. So therefore the experts of the IAEA who are working as staff members dealing with nuclear safety issues they are not inspectors. Uranium and, and plutonium, which are the nuclear materials that we are safeguarding, they are so important today in the world, in particular for producing electricity, so widely used all over the world, that, that they are needed daily, every day daily in, in those countries. But at the same time, uh, by different mechanisms you can use both uranium and plutonium to make nuclear bombs. And this is what the world does not want to happen. And this is why we are there. The, the mission that we have is simply to prevent the use of that material, uranium or plutonium, in nuclear weapons and the spread of it. This is what the international community uh, demands from us. This is what the future generations depend on and this is what is our responsibility to deliver.